Hey guys, it's Penelope in London. If I, I'm going to say, if I cough um, at all, it's because I've had a cold for, since the 11th of February. So do forgive me, I'll try not to. And I'll try and keep this shorter than my other videos as well. But what we've had going into this is, I'm glad, actually, I'm glad I'm well enough to come on today to do this because I almost didn't think I'd be able to. We have the new moon. And it's conjunct, the sun and moon are conjunct when it's a full moon, if you don't know astrology. When it's a full moon, new moon, when it's a full moon, it's opposite. So this is a new moon. The implication here was that it was conjunct Saturn and also it's in Pisces at one degree, 21, 22 there. I'm going to show you briefly astro-seek.com and then I'll show you astro Dot com as well because I want to show you my chart and get a bit of clarity on what's going on. There's some quite interesting things going on over the next few weeks in March. It's quite significant astrology. We have Saturn will be moving into Pisces on the 7th of March. We've got the Jupiter Chiron conjunction. So what I'm going to do actually is go forward by days. Now I am going to talk about the new moon briefly, let's say, and then I'll explain the Jupiter Chiron and the Pluto Aquarius, which Pluto Aquarius, I think it was 1778, the last time Pluto was in Aquarius. So quite exciting times ahead of us. So what we've got with this moon Saturn up there, the moon and Saturn, you see here, conjunct. I did like that the part of fortune, part of fortune is involved in this, but I'm not going to go into that today. With the moon Saturn, we can feel low, we can feel, you know, lonely, we might feel we've been in a bad mood, lack of communication and feeling disappointed. And that's, you know, where we can play out the martyr with the 12th house Piscean energy, but we have the opposition there, which opposite is Virgo. So we're better off at this point moving into being of service. So being of service also would involve that we look after ourselves. It's not just because when we are able to look after ourselves and our own health and well-being, then we're able to serve the greater good and the greater whole. But the Saturn there, which will be moving into Pisces on the 7th of March, that new moon that we've had today, um, can mean that we feel that we, you know, I'm not looking at things from a great perspective. And clearly there's a lot going on in the world that has implicated us feeling like that. Um, as pre-2020, we may have had goals and ideas. We were on a treadmill or a roller coaster of, you know, the, the success, the great things, the egocentric self and a lot of us have lost direction, in my view. Like, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next. It was a shock to our system, I do believe. So if we're feeling low and we're feeling not very friendly, then it's okay to tell people, just explain. I'm, I'm, you know, taking a day out. I'm not in the mood, whatever it may be. We've also got, it's conjunct the sun. So this is a bit disruptive to our relationships all in all, that Saturn conjunct that new moon or the new moon conjunct Saturn. Um, we may feel obligated, but it's also a good time where we can organize and plan things with that. So you could maybe be looking at, rather than going all doom and gloom, you can think, okay, what, what's ahead of me? What do I need to deal with? We don't want to restrict others during this time. You know, other people have got their own stuff going on because they may be feeling low energy as well. And Saturn on the sun can have that type of feeling. It's energy. We may find it hard to relate, but it's better we don't dwell on things and get on with the task at hand. So another aspect then of um, what I'm going to do, I'll come back to this beautiful solar fire chart, but I'm going to share this here let's see okay this is my chart briefly not all about me about the moon and all of us so for me it happened in my third house so let me get my pointer I'm impressed I haven't coughed yet 
I just took something called NAC, which is a like off the vitamin shelf, so to speak, and it seems to um, have calmed me down a little bit. So you can see here that my moon, new moon for me was here. And it's, I've got a square, lovely, to my AC and my DC. So I've been feeling that in my own life at this time. If you see here as well, I've got true Lilith at 23 degrees of Aquarius. And that Saturn has, it's still sort of in all, but it's moving off. But that's been challenging for me because this is about true Lilith, this is about stepping up to the plate, so to speak, where we feel we've maybe not living up to our true selves. So true Lilith is about, it's about being our true selves. I'll make some more videos on that, Lilith, and Chiron as well is a beautiful, beautiful thing to look at in our healing journey. So Pisces keywords are disillusionment. It's where we can feel like we're the victim, where we're persecuted. So don't, you know, this isn't all just Pisces because we're looking at Neptune and Neptune's very beautiful. It's beyond the five senses. We have where we can be a martyr. We want to escape. It's addiction. It's astral glamour. It's where we're psychic. We could feel helpless, hopeless, weak boundaries, surrender. It's our subconscious. It's also transcendence. It's where we may feel wounded, innocent, um, lost of identity. So with the Saturn involved here, you know, it's like, what the hell is going on? I feel a bit lost. So you can maybe feel him, but not all is lost. Emotions move, as we know. We don't stay stuck in one place. So that's what's going on for me. There's a bit more there for me. And I'm only showing you mainly this so that when you look at your own chart, if you go to astro.com, you can put it, bring up your own chart. It's quite simple once you hit their main homepage to understand it, but you do need your time of birth. You see here, so that moon for me is squaring to my south node. So when it was a full moon, it's square to my south node. It's square to my ascendant. And it's square to my north node there. And the sun clearly is doing the same. So the moon was on top of that. This is a bit later in the day now. So I'm being challenged in a good way. The other thing that's going on there for me when you're looking at your chart, and to learn aspects and degrees takes time. A square is 90 degrees. So it's either separating or it's applying when you look at it. If that's one degree, you can see that it's moving on here and that it's applying to this, but it's separating from there, however way you want to look at it. So the moon, though, this moon is trying to my Jupiter, which is really beautiful. So not all is lost, as we can see with these things. The, the moon is also square to Mars. My Mars is 23 degrees up here. So the moon at that time was square to my Mars, and it's also square to my sun. This is a busy one, hey? Challenge. So squares are internal challenges, oppositions are stuff outside ourselves, um, inattention squares. So the sun is also trying to my Jupiter, so good one, yeah? And then the sun is square Mars, and the sun is square to my sun. What fun I've had. And I've had a cold. But many people in the UK have it, I have to say. So I feel some peace about that because it means that it's on its way out because the people that I've known that have had it have got better. So then if we go, we're going to go now to astro-seek here, there. And I'm going to show you this chart, which is easier for you guys to look at. And then I'll go back to solar fire. So I want to get the spotlight. And you know, this is a lot of beauty that's going on here. And we're very challenged, but I see it as a good thing. So we've got this Pluto, which will be going into Aquarius. We've got Mercury is in Aquarius. We've got Jupiter. 
Saturn in Aquarius, which will be moving into Pisces. This is the new moon. This is Neptune. And that's going to, I think it's 2025, 2026. Neptune takes about 180 odd years around the chart, but forgive me if I'm wrong, if I'm thinking about it. Right now, as I'm recording this, because it's a bit later in the day, after the moon, this is, Venus is now in Aries. It's just ingress, it's just gone in. I've got a Venus Aries at 18 degrees, so I'm going to have a Venus return, which is quite beautiful this coming month, coming up soon when it gets to 18 degrees. Jupiter is 9 degrees in Aries, and Chiron is 13 degrees in Aries. So these are going to conjunct, and I'll show you that on Solar Fire. The North Node is conjunct Uranus, and they're separating, so 15 degrees and you look at this, you know, it's on its way, the node is on its way that way into the sign of Aries. And I think, again, that's happening in March as well, but I'd have to double check. Because I think it's about a degree a week. So maybe I'm wrong, but we'll double check that. Then we've got Mars in Gemini, and Mars has been here for many months because it went retrograde. So Mars in Gemini, it's at 15 degrees. So that's just about to hit my moon, that Mars. It's squaring to my Pluto and it's squaring to my, also to my Uranus. The interesting thing is where that Mars is right now, the generation I was born into, because I'm Pluto Virgo at 15 degrees and Pluto Uranus at 15 degrees. So that means a lot of people who are in their 50s have had that happen. They're having that conjunction not conjunction, that aspect at the moment, a square, challenges. So what is the new moon? The new moon, and we're seeing here, so look what's going on. We've got, I always, I like True Lilith in the chart. I like um, looking at that work of Lilith. It's brilliant. Lilith in the story of the myth. And myth is really important, you know, um, the archetypes and the collective unconscious, the work of Carl Jung, where he spoke about the mind and the unconscious and the unconscious acts. And he did say, I recall him talking about, there's an old BBC video of him where he talks about war, you know, that man created the H-bomb. He was making that quite clear, you know, that we have, he said, I think word for word, maybe not, but he said, the world hangs by a thin thread, and that is the psyche of man. And he's very correct in that, that whatever's going on right now is to do with the minds of man. We have natural disasters, but when we consider, we implicate with our technologies and many, many things. And also I have been, which is quite interesting, listening to Jordan Peterson on this whole climate change idea. And I think it's worth listening to his views on that matter. He's got a different, different opinions to, you know, there's different opinions out there. We have to go with what's right for us. You know, nothing's black or white, so to speak. There's a lot of grey sort of like uncertainty of what is real and what we're being told. And if we go back to, you know, COVID and that part of time that we were in and the restrictions, and then we look at what we're being told now, we can see that it's not black and white what we were told and how we reacted to it. And some people are still stuck in that psyche of fear. And then when we're looking at wars, that can cause a lot of trauma to the mind as well. And particularly, you know, the people having to go through that, it's very tragic. And we're sort of a bit removed from it because when we look at these things, we, you know, it, it's hard to imagine what that would really be like for people, the people on the front lines you know, horrific, really, that we're not quite as conscious as we think we are. If we go back to Roman times when they were throwing people into the lion's den 
Um, we would, you know, as entertainment, you know, it's sort of like feels to me that it's still a bit that way, that we're not as developed as we could be. But there are many good minds out there that are doing great things. So be mindful of what you watch and who you're getting your information from. I don't know it all, but I know what feels right for me, and that's what we have to go by. So Pisces, the moon, you know, if we look at the 12th house, it's where we can help other people. You know, it's about being of service. A new moon, it's where things, the 12th house is where things are hidden. So it's to do with secrets, where the secrets can occur. So we have to be certain that, you know, that what we're actually saying and watch, you know, think about what we're saying to ourselves as well in our own mind it's where we can work behind the scenes in the 12th house so I'm talking about the 12th house now which is Pisces connected and it's also Neptune but for me we know that as I showed you the moon is going to fall into different places for you it's fallen into my 12th house no sorry it's fallen into my third house third so it's where we may want to work behind the scenes and take a bit of a back seat. So I felt like that anyway, but I've had a cold, so I've been feeling like a bit of a back seat for the last week or so. It's where we can be sure what we need to be sure that we're being open and honest if we're dealing with other people and being totally honest with ourselves. We met and this working and having time alone is okay. It's a new moon. It's okay for to sec, for seclusion and you know, think, sorting things out and getting rid of outside distractions. We can also look at the Pisces, the definition of that, and this is from actually astro-seek, that if we're born under, which I'm not, but if you're born under a Pisces moon, or the sign of Pisces rather, um, it's a sign that's influenced by Aquarius and also by Jupiter, so it's about justice, it's about social conscience, and it's the willingness to help others. While Neptune both helps, and it helps, you know, it can basically complicate things, actually. Neptune, because we've got to keep it real, because we can go a bit too far out there. And then we've got Saturn is our restriction. It can be ruthless. It's examining, wants us to examine our maturity. And it also wants the archetype of the sage. So it can be where we want to get our attention on what we should focus on. I don't like that word should, but, you know, if we, where do I need to focus right now? What do I need to focus on? What do I need to develop? So we're being asked that. It's like there's no clear, real clear direction at the moment, but we can take baby steps towards where we want to be heading. So you can see the North Node is here. This is exciting change as well. If you look at this chart, you've got the sun explaining to you the sun is at 122, the moon is at 122, Pisces. We've got Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. So when you look at this, this information is transposed onto here. So look, Mercury, Aquarius, 12 degrees. So we go Aquarius, Mercury, 12 degrees. So if you're learning, just keep pushing at it because eventually it all comes together bit by bit. And it's a never ending process of learning because I learn something new every single day, as we all do. You can never get bored with astrology because when you look at people's charts and you start looking at the wounding, you can begin to do a lot of healing work for yourself and others. We learn things about ourselves. So this is a Jung used astrology. One of his daughters um, studied it and used it as well. Symbolism goes back way before we can possibly ever imagine. Now, we're back to this solar fire. I'll make sure I'm on the right page. Share. And I've got my pointer here. Okay. So we're going to look at, we've got this 7th of March. We've got Saturn Pisces which I'll make another video on, but I'm just going to show you. There's Saturn. We're going to go, it's 28 degrees there. So if we go to the 7th of March. Okay, you see that it's 29, 56 degrees. So if we go an hour ahead 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, then it's in. This is the 7th of March and it's at 2 p.m. London time, okay, roughly. So in the afternoon of London time, if you're not in London and you're in New York, it's five hours behind. If you're in California, it's eight hours behind. And if you're ahead, then it's ahead. So, you know, another day, another time. But that gives you an idea. On that day, we also, I will tell you, this will be here for, it will do, it will be there for until February 2026, I believe. February 26, it will be in this sign. Where are we, 23? Okay. So until February 26, I hope I've got that right. And it will do three retrogrades in this area before it fully moves into the sign of Aries. I was born with Saturn Pisces. It was very rough, I have to say, in my fourth house. Some good aspects to it, though, so not all bad. Again, we want to look at aspects. Then that's on the 12th of March. We have days, one, two, three, four, five, 11th, 12th. So we have Jupiter conjunct here, Chiron. So this is an interesting one. We've got the wound, then we've got the expansion, which is another video I have to tell you. And then we have finally this Pluto. Let's go ahead, Dave. You see it's 29, 45, 29 degrees, 45. When the USA was formed, it was at 27 degrees of Pluto was seven, 27 degrees of Capricorn in 1776. So the last time that's been there is a long time ago. It takes 245 odd years around the chart. So let's go forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, 10, 11, 12. There you go. Zero, zero. 23rd of March, it will be in the sign of Aquarius. It will be in there and then it will retrograde back in and then it will move back into Aquarius again. So the brief time it's there, it's quite, to me, that's quite a celebration. I mean, I don't know how, the interesting thing is when that happens, I have to just see that I've just noticed on that day, Mars is at the 29th degree. So there's a whole thing around that. And, and I think it's called anoratic or I can't recall off the top of my head. I don't know everything about astrology. I'm learning as I go, but that's that's very interesting. And then we got that North Node. So this is quite, I have heard from stuff from some astrologers that there may be some events that are difficult when that Mars moves into cancer, but I'm not going to go into that now. So then let's see. If we go forward, in fact, let's go by weeks because I want to show you that north node moving into the sign of Aries. There you go. Got that. Well, okay. So we're looking at July for that. Okay. I think that's it for today. Um, I think, is there anything else I want to show you here? At that point, and then you can see that on in July, that's retrograde, gone retrograde back into the sign. Pluto has gone retrograde back into the sign of Capricorn. Two, three. If I go forward. So it does go back, to, and then it goes forward again. And then I'm going forward here, and then it will move back in in... January, I think, 2024. So fascinating times ahead. Let me know what house it's in for you. And if you want to book a session, then see my link below the video on YouTube. Thanks for watching.